Unlike Google's Pixel 5, in fact, it's become my go-to phone out of everything else I've reviewed this year. Check out my review to find out why. But there's an issue that has caused a mini storm inside the Pixel 5 community, the screen gap. You may have seen my story or read elsewhere, don't, about the gap between the Pixel 5 screen and its body, which is now informally known as the screen gap. Hundreds of owners have complained on Google's product forums, on Reddit, and they've even contacted me directly. It's a serious and big issue for early adopters. Google told me it was looking into the issue when it first popped up, and it has since concluded its investigation. In an update on the support forums, David Pop said that, we can confirm that the variation in the clearance between the body and the display is a normal part of the design of your Pixel 5. He added that there is no effect on the water and dust resistance or functionality of your phone. A normal part of the design of your Pixel 5. The issue exists because some units are seeing this gap and some aren't. And because some do, some don't, that points towards a flaw. This is Ricky Panisar, a repair specialist who I spoke with about the Pixel 5 display problem. So what's going wrong with the display? Is it a design flaw? I asked Ricky to canvas a group of repair experts he's connected with for their opinion. I suspect that production has been rushed only because they have deadlines to keep and COVID has slowed everything down. Because one of the techs, again, like I said, um, said that apparently the gap is used to relieve tension on the glass when you have impacts there's a gap that the screen can go into. That makes sense, but if that's spread across all of the handsets, all of the Pixel 5s had that, then you could say, okay, cool, that's been intentionally designed. Looking beneath the phone, a teardown by YouTube channel PBK revealed that there are clips holding the screen to the frame. So it doesn't look like it's gonna come apart anytime soon. PBK speculates that the glue holding the phone together might be the issue. Ricky Panisar, however, says he's not confident about the phone's ability to withstand the elements. I would just question if the IP rating that they have with their water resistance, because they're not waterproof, and I, I do have to say that about all tech, no tech yet is waterproof, it's water resistant. Um, I would be questioning how resistant the, the handsets with the gap issue are. If we were to take two handsets and we were to test them against each other and really put them through the paces, would the one with the gap survive as long as the one without? I would be betting no. I, we personally, as a, as a company, don't repair pixels, but would Google be seeing more repairs under warranty or out of warranty for their Pixel 5s that have the gap issue? I would, I would say yes. Predictably, Google's response hasn't gone down very well with affected Pixel 5 users. One I spoke with said that being able to separate the display with a fingernail should never be a part of any design choice. Two others I spoke with returned their devices for a new Pixel 5, both of which had the same issue. Another reader detailed an arduous process of taking his Pixel 5 back to a new store and trying two new replacements, both of which had the same gap problem. He also told me that in the store, the display units he saw had the same issue. Make no mistake, this is a big issue, which appears to be affecting hundreds of users, if not more. There were 400 comments on a single Reddit post alongside tens of other posts. The first complaint on Google support forums received almost 1,000 upvotes and 612 responses, most of which were complaining about the same problem. It is clearly a widespread concern. But is that the full story? It turns out Google's phone isn't the only one with this screen gap. Previous Samsung phones, including the 2018 Galaxy S9 and even the most recent Galaxy Note 20 have had similar complaints from users. These weren't recalled and I haven't seen any significant issues relating to widespread water damage in either phone. So it may be a fairly common manufacturing issue. When I asked Samsung about the screen gaps in its previous phones, it refused to comment. Apple's latest iPhone 12 also has a gap in the screen, which Panasar thinks could be an issue down the line. What we do know from the past is facial recognition fails more because of liquid and the liquid gets in through the earpiece mesh. So if you look at your iPhone, there's a small earpiece mesh, liquid gets in through that and it's only a tiny amount of liquid that can get through to damage your facial recognition. If that's the highest reason for the, for the damage, then what about putting a small gap around the whole of your screen? I don't see it as a defect yet, but we could be sat here in 12 months time saying, hey, Apple are announcing that there is a recall, but I don't know. I, I, I don't think it will happen. I think that it's been very much put in by Apple as a small gap 
um, and that's to remove the screens. So it looks like this year's major phones from Google, Samsung and Apple have all had screen gaps. It's too early to tell if this will cause issues down the line or even if it's an issue at all. For now though, Google is replacing units of affected users, which suggests it isn't a normal part of design as they previously said. We'll likely know more in the coming months. If you've had an issue with the screen gap, then get in touch via the Facebook link. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.